to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and I'm smiling because I've just been sent this puzzle to have a go at today and it's called Michael Palin and it's by Star Warigami and um, well oh, this is a good way to get stuff on Cracking the Cryptic is to name it after people I really admire and Michael Palin is one of the well in, in my view one of the funniest uh, comedy actors that we've ever produced here in the UK. Uh, I am a massive fan of Monty Python and perhaps an even bigger fan actually of the film A Fish Called Wanda which would certainly be in my top five of all time and I will have to stop myself quoting it liberally <laughs> during the course of this solve perhaps because a number of the uh, a number of well a number of the the quotes that you might use in Monty Python nowadays are probably completely inappropriate. Uh, so if I do pause the video, that will be why it will be to edit out um, stuff that isn't isn't fit for family entertainment. Um, anyway, I don't actually have a clue how difficult this puzzle is. Uh, it's got I've read the rules and they sound quite doable. So we shall see. You'll have to judge it from the length of the video. Um, and I don't have much other news today. Um, other than, I suppose, an appeal. It's possible somebody watching this will know Michael Palin or know somebody who knows Michael Palin. So perhaps put this in front of Michael Palin. Maybe Michael Palin will, will find out about Cracking the Cryptic and that would be rather marvellous. Um, we do have sort of have a tangential connection with John Cleese because, of course, Peter C. Hayward, who's been a big uh, fan and helper of the channel over the last couple of years, uh, has spoken to John Cleese. I think he is actually John Cleese's biggest fan. Um, so, And I know John Cleese likes Sudoku, although to my knowledge he's never actually uh, looked at a crack in the cryptic puzzle. Anyway, what else can I tell you about? Um, just, uh, just a reminder actually, if you own any of our Sudoku apps, um, and if you don't, why not? They are they are marvellous. They're all full of they're full of handcrafted puzzles, which distinguishes them somewhat dramatically from every other Sudoku app out there, just about. Um, and uh, they've all been updated now, so you can get all the puzzles, all the hints, and some of the puzzles are by the great and the good of the Sudoku world. People like Sam Kaplan, Lines, Fister McBell, Codec, absolutely magnificent stuff. So make sure your apps are up to date. Um, and we'll be back to you very soon with news of a new app. I was testing some puzzles yesterday by Fistamafel for Domino Sudoku, which is coming very soon. Um, now, let's get on with the rules of Star Warigami's puzzle. They are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits cannot repeat within a cage. Um, the digits uh, in a cage sum to this, the cage total. Okay, And along each line, the cage totals form a palindrome, reading the same from each end. So I think what that means is, look, there's a line here that goes through a whole load of cages. And what we're being told is that the cage total, this cage total, is going to be the same as that cage total. So the cage totals form a palindrome. So if this was, I don't know, a 15 cage, this would be a 15 cage. And then the next cage is a single cell cage. So that cage total will be the same as those threes. The sum of these three digits will be the sum of this one. This, these two will sum to that one, etc. So you make your way along each palindromic line or each line, making sure the cage totals form palindromes. It's a really cute idea, actually. Um, and that will, if we, if we can do that properly, we will solve the puzzle. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, let's get cracking. <laughs> I'm trying not to quote Monty Python. Um, Ken's coming to kill me. Um, that wasn't Monty Python. So how should we do? I probably I should have left that those um, those color. I think coloring is probably a sensible way to go here, isn't it? So let's color some cages that we know are equivalents. Um, so these. So when where a cage is identically colored, it means it must have the same total. So this one is, why is that? I suppose, oh, I suppose that's just that's just there to make it seem like the palindrome isn't isn't strange. I'm not sure why that's in a cage. Um, that is a very big cage, look, and that must be the same as the other side of this palindrome, which is those cells. Um, then then it goes to this one, which must be the same as those cells. And then it goes to this one, which must be the same as that cell. And the grey actually shows up rather nicely there. Um, now, are we going to continue on this journey? Probably we ought to. So this one 
is the same as those three. Now, I'm the problem is with this, I'm going to run out of colours, aren't I? And this one... Ah! I, I've just spotted something that's a little bit interesting. Let me tell you about this. Okay. So, this digit is odd. And that's because of the secret. And now the secret is something I only tell my favourite people. Um, but if you're watching this video, of course you're one of those people. And the secret is that any complete box, indeed any complete row, any complete column of a Sudoku, because of the rules of Sudoku, contains the digits 1 to 9 once each. And if you add up the digits 1 to 9, you get 45. Now 45 is an odd number. But we know that this cage total and this cage total are the same. So whatever, whatever yellow adds up to... There are two lots of yellow in box five, and two of any number will sum to an even number. So the yellow cells, the yellow digits altogether are even. 45 is odd, so that cell is odd. And what's more, actually, this odd digit, which we know now is 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9, is the sum of three numbers. So it's not 1, 3, or 5. So this is 7 or 9. Um, now, if it's 7, this would be 1, 2, 4. But if it's 9, this would have three different ways it could make its total work. Um, right. Hmm. Okay. Right. Okay, this domino now looks interesting to me. I know I didn't finish my colour, but now, I, now I'm sort of interested in this. Uh, this... This cage here is the sum of five digits. Now, because you can't repeat a digit in a cage, the minimum sum of these five cells is the triangular, triangle number, triangular number for five, which is one plus two plus three plus four plus five, or 15. So if this domino adds up to at least 15, it must be made up of relatively high numbers. Um, and... Yeah, okay, so how do these two cages interact with each other is what I'm wondering. Um, hmm, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but if we think about this cage, we know it adds up to at least 15. And we know it cannot add up to more than 17, because I can't put more than 17 in here. So I think that means it has to have a 1, 2, and a 3 in it. Because if it didn't have a 3, for example, the minimum it could be would be 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. And that adds up to 18. So I think there's something going on between this orange cage and this... And this 15 cage or 16 cage or 17 cage, whatever it happens to be. I mean, certainly if this was 1, 2, 4, we'd have to have a 1, 2 pair here. Two, one. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6 is 17. And that works just okay. So this can be 1, 2, 4, but only if this is an 8, 9 pair. And then this would be a 1-2 pair, and this would be a 3-5-6 triple. Okay, all right, we can't disprove that, I'm afraid. We have to look somewhere else. Now, what we can do, probably, is limit the value of this cell using the secret. Because that is a great big conglomeration of cells. That is seven cells. And the triangular number for 7 is 28, i.e. what is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. So these cells add up to at least 28, and these cells add up to at least 15. So that's 43. So this cell has to be a 1 or a 2 only, which is a little... Ah. Okay, so that... That means that there, re there really aren't many degrees of freedom, therefore, in this box. Um, how could this be 17 now? If this is 17, this is a minimum of 28. That's 45 already. This would have to be a zero. That doesn't work. So, right, this is beautiful. This is really beautiful. So now let's come back to these digits 
again and ask whether this can be 7 because now I don't think it can be because if, the, if this was 1, 2, 4 these have a minimum value now of 3, 5, 6 this has a min well this would have to be a 1, 2 pair and these would add up to 17 minimum which makes this 8, 9 and therefore this has to be a 0 so that all fails that's a 9 these digits have to be Well, let me think about this. Hang on. These have to be something that allows this to work and not push this up too high and this to make this too low. So, how do we do this then? So, right. Okay. Here is something mildly interesting, I think. I think we can claim that these, this domino here is made up of 1s, 2s and 3s. And that's because if you think about the three ways we can make nine in three digits, we could have one, two, six. Now, that means that the one and the two in this purple cage would have to go into these two cells because they couldn't repeat in the column. Now, next option is one, three, five. And again, we know there's a one and a three in this five cell cage, so they would have to go in this domino. The final option is two, three, four. And again, that would put two and three here. So this is always two low digits. And this is always, well, it then depends what, what we put into this nine cage as to what can go in here. But we can't, ah, ah yes, right, okay. Here is something interesting, right. 234 doesn't work, does it? Because if we make this 234, we cannot now put a 4 in this cage because this is a 2, 3 pair. So this is a minimum of 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, which is 17, which I cannot put here because it breaks box 2. So this is not this is not 2, 3, 4, which means it's got a 1 in it. It's either 1, 2, 6 or 1, 3, 5. And that means there's a one, there's def right, that means there's definitely a one in this domino, and it's either one and two or one and three, depending on what the orange is. And frankly, this all feels like it allows me to say, Ethel the Aardvark goes quantity surveying. Which is <laughs> from the bookshop sketch. Actually, that didn't have Michael Palin in it, I don't think. Ah. No, maybe it didn't. Ah, well, never mind. It's still quite a funny thing to say, or quite a funny book to answer or ask for. Um, the Amazing Adventures of Captain Gladys Stowe Pamphlet and the Intrepid Spaniel Stig Amongst the Giant Pygmies of Corsica, Volume 2. Um, Olson's Standard Book of British Birds. The one, the expurgated version, the one without the gannet. I don't like gannets, they wet their nests. Uh, anyway, Simon, concentrate. Um, now, what does this all mean? This means that I've distracted myself. These are low. If this was 135, does that work? 135 would put 1 and 3 here. So this could be 246 as a minimum. And 24 and 6 add up to. Uh, so this would be 16 then overall. This would be 7, 9, 16 plus, this is at least 28. Now that could work. No, that could work. If this was exactly 28, this would be a 1. Oh, bobbins. Okay. And presumably we, we take the pressure off with 1, 2, 6, because then we'd have 1, 2 here. And we could have this was one, two, six, we could have three, four, five here, and that would add up to 15, which makes this 15, which means this could even be a two, yeah. Okay, so we don't yet know quite how these interact with each other. Right. Um, hmm, okay, hang on, let me just think about this. So that there's definitely there's some sort of constraint here, isn't there, between this? Oh, it's really this line. This line is the interesting one, I think. Perhaps impacted by this one. We've also got something going on at the bottom here, though. Those two. Oh, 
those two have to be the same as those two. We'll make those um, gray is probably the safest color. Then these four have to be the same as these three. I'll make those red. And these two have to be the same as this one. Uh, no, okay. So this line at the bottom has let itself down, I think. I don't, you know, everything there is approximately the same size and none of them are big enough, I think, to really impact on their boxes. This one, a two and a three, ah, ah, no, this one's more interesting because this is the same as these. I'll make those purple. Now, this is the sum of three different digits. So this is at least one plus two plus three. So this is at least a six. Um, so these are relatively low digits. Yeah, okay, and we've got the same thing going on with greens here. Look, these greens are equivalent, and this is the sum of three different digits. So this square here is six, seven, eight, or nine. What I love about puzzles like this is that they, they take some stuff that you already know, like, you know, how many killer Sudokus have we done in our lives? The answer to that is a lot. And they do, they sort of, you know, they change the logic a bit. So all of a sudden we have to think in new ways. Um, hmm. So, what does this mean? We know that this is either, that's 28. The maximum size of this is 16. But this could be as low as 15. 15 is just possible. So if that's 15, this could be 29. Right, okay. So this, this seven cell region is either 28 or 29. There's, there's one degree of freedom in this box. So we can increase this from 15 to 16, or we could increase this from 28 to 29, or we could have this as one or two. So that's, that's the options. Now that means that this cage is it's got loads of known digits in it because it's either missing eight and nine or it's missing seven and nine using the secret. Uh, it was a seven cell region. It could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. They are the only two ways that we can get to these totals. So it, ah, so it, yeah, I see it, right. So it doesn't have a nine in it. Therefore nine in box three is restricted can't have a nine in it because if it has a nine in it the other six digits will add up to 21 minimum that's a triangle number for six 21 plus nine is 30 and 30 is too big for this because that must be at least 15 qed so where does the nine go it can't go in this cage or well, this would add up to at least 19 because the other four digits triangle number for four one two plus two plus three plus four is ten 19 is not a possible total here so none of those cells can contain a nine and i definitely can't put a nine here because these two cells summed together would give a two digit number, which this cannot be. So I think this is a nine, and that means this is a seven or an eight by maths. This is not a nine. Um, oh no, I was wrong. I was about to say, and now I'm gonna ask where eight goes in this box, but actually, although eight can't go in purple, eight can go in blue, so that's a nonsense question. Um, bother, right, so, ah, oh no. <laughs> I, thought I'd have, I thought I'd have another epiphany. So eight in, eight in this column, it can't go in purple. It doesn't seem to be able to go in orange, so eight is here or here. Oh no, no, right, seven can't go in purple either. Because if seven's in purple, this is adding up to 17, and we've ruled that out as the option for this. This is lovely. Right, so this is a seven, eight pair in column seven. And therefore this is pretty. Um, how did I get this as nine now? That's, oh, I know how I got this as nine. I got this as nine 
because it had to be a three, it had to be odd and it had to be a three cell total. Yes, right. So hang on, don't I know the total for these cages then? I do. Because of the secret, this whole box adds to 45. 45 minus 9 is 36, and yellows are, yellows are equal totals. So the, the, each of these is an 18 cage. So now in this column, we can do maths, can't we? This is 18, and we know that for sure. We don't know what this is, but it's at least 15. So that's 33. We know that this is at least 7. That's 40. So these two digits have a maximum value of 5, and that's not really much use. Okay, this is 1, 2, 3, or 4. Um, this is 18, but it doesn't have... Oh, no, so... Ah, no. Okay, sorry. Um... Oh, no. Right. OK, sorry. <laughs> I keep I'm bouncing around here. But now, now I'm going to ask where 9 goes in that box, I think. 9 can't go in blue. We've, we've worked that out. We've worked out it can't go in purple. It can't go there by Sudoku. So it goes in the empty white cell here, which means 9 is in one of these three cells. Now, I wonder if it can be here. If this is 9... The answer is it can be, can't it? These two have to be the same. So this would have to be quite high digits. 9 and 1, 10. Oh, no, not really, actually. It just has to add up to at least 10, which is totally possible. Um, OK. So what next? Right, I know what we do. We do some ge ge geometric stuff, don't we, I think. Um, because, let's look at the blue, the blue cage here. We know this blue cage is full of lots and lots of low digits. Um, I.e. it's got to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 in it. So these, these digits here have to appear in the blue cage. Because we know these are low. Well, they can't go in those cells and they can't go in that cell by Sudoku. So this is a 1, 2, 3. Um, well, the options for these two cells are 1, 2 and 3 and they definitely include a 1 because they have to be the same digits as here. Oh, this is beautiful. Right. So these, these digits are the same. So where do those digits go in this box? They've got to go here. So these digits are not including... Um, fives and the sixes so this these these have these have a one in them this square here is now not well yeah so this square here is the sort of medium value of the nine options because the nine options are either one three five or one two six and we know the one two and three options from those are all are definitely in this domino so this is the high option this is the sort of the five or the six option And that, I don't know if that does anything, actually. Um, ah, come on. Uh, no, sorry. I thought that would be really interesting. But it appears it's not. <laughs> um, right. Okay. So what do we do next then? The answer is I don't know. Um, okay. Let me think. So I know these digits repeat. This digit has to appear in blue, doesn't it? Is that right? It is right, yeah, because we know we know purple's the makeup of purple is only allowed to include the digits one, two, three, four, five, and six. If we put a seven in there, 
we, we get up to 17, which we know this cannot be. Yes. So as this digit is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and it's not 1, but whatever this digit is, because we know that the blue contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, it must live in blue. And it's not in those blue cells, and it's not the same as these cells, so that cell is the same as that cell, and that is a bit disappointing, actually. But those two are the same. Um... And we know that, do we, can I do better than that somehow? So that's got to live down there somewhere. Can we restrict this a bit more? All this a bit more? I sort of feel like, I don't know if I, I don't actually know if I can. Um, I'm almost tempted to take that pencil mark out, that two, three, four, five, six, because it just it's just cluttering up our pencil marks overall. We'll just remember these two cells are the same digit. Right, okay, now that is useful. That is useful. Okay, so now I'm going to look at box six. Because but yeah, no, this is actually very clever. Right. Not by me, I hasten to add, but by Star Warigami. Um, this digit here is 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 a digit from the digits two, three, four, five, and six. We know purple has digits in it that are one, two, three, four, five, and six. So look carefully at those six digits. That is a six tuplet on one, two, three, four, five, and six. So seven and eight in this box are in those two cells. Now that means ah yeah I wonder if that matters so we know that this domino contains two low digits I've just looked how can I have had 27 minutes on this puzzle I've only just started it has time literally flown what is going on I, I don't understand how I've had even I felt like I've had 10 minutes maximum I'm so sorry Good grief. Um, okay, well anyway, let's... I'm really shocked by that. I'm really shocked. I feel, I feel like I must have gone to sleep or something. And I've just woken up and continued without... Um, well, anyway, right. So we, we know that there's a 1 in this domino. So I can't have a 1 in this string of digits. And we also know there's another low digit here, which could be a 2 or a 3. So the absolute minimum for these squares is going to be if there's a 3 up here. So this, would, this could be 2, 4, 5. 2, 4, 5 is 11, plus 7 is 18. So, oh, it's not good enough. These add up to 18 at least. Um, which means these have to be modestly high, but I don't think that's going to be enough, is it? Um bobbins uh, this is high now ah okay simple right this is not nine anymore if that's nine this domino is adding up to either 16 or 17 so you'd have to put nine in into here to make sure these cages had the same total and you therefore repeat the nine in the row so that is not nine nine is down here Um, okay, now we will <laughs> we will go back to staring at the puzzle. One thought I did have actually um, a few moments ago about this is that it's almost like set uh, equivalent theory in the sense that you can almost cancel out, you know. You, it doesn't really work in terms of here but because you know that the palindromic numbers are the same you know those three and those three have the same totals so you can so in a sort of set sense you can cancel them out it looks yeah look, if you look so we know these five have the same total as those six 
It sort of feels like you should be able to do something with this. This one, we know those six have the same total as those seven. We know, so we know this massive collection of digits has the same total as that collection of digits. See, this is almost, it almost looks like we should be able to do maths on this, doesn't it? Those, oh. Right, okay. Well, this isn't what I was planning to do, but I'm going to do this anyway. Yes, I, I think I'm going to get this digit because I can, I can surely do parity on these three boxes. And how do we do parity on these, oops, on these three boxes? Well, I know that because each box adds up to 45, in total, these boxes add up to 135, which is odd. Now, Blue plus blue will give an even number. Purple plus purple will give an even number. So at the moment I'm on an even total. This grey plus that will give an even number. So I'm still on an even number. Add 9 to that, I'm on an odd number. Add 15 to that, I'm back on an even number. So this must be odd. This must be odd to make sure that parity works boxes two three and six that's lovely it's absolutely lovely so that's a five and this is a one three pair which means that this is a one three pair using our logic from earlier this is a one three pair which means three is not down here which oh in fact look now we know what these are these are two four and six which means that this is two, four, oh, okay, which we knew anyway. We, we knew, we would have known that if I'd looked at this box and thought about it. Um, so now, now what do we know? Do we know, do we know more than we did about the world? Or have we, oh, well, I know what that is now. Okay, so now I know the total of purple. Purple is six. I want to say that's right yeah one two three four and six is 16 so this is a seven nine pair and I know the order oh this is gorgeous right nine seven is the only way because obviously this one can't be nine aha so now yeah so now this is a one isn't it because now we've got six we've used up our degree of freedom by making this not 15 so this is 16 16 and that 28 is 44 which allows this to be a digit that's not zero. So this is one, this is eight, this is seven. These two cells add up to seven without using one. So this is either two, five or three, four. This is not a one, so this is almost fascinating. Six and eight have to be in here now. And don't we know what, um, yeah, we know what this total is. This had to add up to, yeah, this added up to 18. So that's got to have a four in it as well. So now there's no four down here, which means there's no three down there. So this is two, five, and this is a three. And that gives us a three and the one in box nine. Three is in one of those three cells in box, um, in box seven. And, hmm, okay. And we can get rid of the one pencil mark here. We've got... Is there some way I can do some... I want to do something on this row now, knowing these digits. Oh no, because these are not in this row, so that's nonsense. That's nonsense. Sorry, I was talking absolute gibberish. Don't do gibberish, Simon. Actually use your brain, it will help you. Um, okay. Oh, I almost, I always wanted to make those both eights because I saw the gray and I was like, okay, these must be the same, but that's nonsense, isn't it? We know that. No, okay, so. 
if these were both eights, there'd be an eight down here, and this would be a seven, and that would be 15. Ah, okay, right. Now, now what we need to do, I think, is to consider the juxtaposition of these cells, because this has a maximum value of 20. So I can't put 8 and 7 in here, can I? Because if I do, 8 plus 7 plus 2 plus 4, I can't use 1 and 3 in this cage, is 21. And that's bigger than I could ever make this. So I think this cannot be an 8. Because that would put 8 and 7 in this cage. So this has to be a 7. This has to be an 8. And now... Hmm. Okay, so now there's an 8 over here. I'm not sure. It might be possible for this to be 8 if this was 6, 9. But these three digits now have a minimum value of 2 plus 4 plus 5, which is 11. So that's 19. Right. Yeah, so then, right, this is good. Okay, so this is at least 19 because we need the reds to have the equal value. And therefore, this is a, this domino is at least 16. I, it must have a 9 in it, so that must be a 9. This must be a 7 or an 8. And the, this string of digits must include 2 and 4. And then it's either going to be 5 or 6 as the final digit to make this column work, which gives us... Oh, I see. So we can just place 7 by Sudoku at the top of the grid, which means this is not a 7 now. So this is 6 or 9. This is not 8 by Sudoku. Um, no, I'm wrong about this. I'm Well, I'm sort of wrong about it, but I, I can do better. Right, it's always good to do, do your best. And I failed to do that and let myself down here because I worked out there had to be a 2 and a 4 in this string. Because if there isn't, if you take either, if you took 2 plus 5 plus 6 plus 8 is clearly more than we can ever make this add up to um, because it's 21. So if there's a 2 and a 4 here, this digit must be a 6, which means that digit must be a 6 using our earlier logic. And now there's no 6 down here, so this is 2, 4, 5, which means that we are looking at 19, which means we are looking at a 7 in here. Now this digit has to not be, this has to be even, um, and it's a 6 or an 8, which means these cells are adding up to either 6 or 8. So they definitely have a 1 in them. Um, oh, but simpler than that, yes. In fact, this is a 1, 4 pair. Because we've not put... We need, a, we need to put 6 or 8 somewhere else in this box, and we can't put them in a 6 cage or an 8 cage. So that must be a 6 or an 8, and that leaves just the other digits to have to go in here. So this is a 1-4 pair, um, which means it's not... This is really clever. Okay, yes, there were other ways of thinking about this. One way we could have thought about it is, if I tried to put 6 here, how could we have filled these digits in when 2 and 3 were not available? This would have had to be a 1, 2, 3, triple, and that's not going to work. We could put 1 in one of the digits, the other digit would have failed. So this is 8, this is 6, this is now a 3 by maths. This is now not... Oh, I see, this is not a 4, and we've got a 2, 5 pair in the bottom row. And now we've got 6s, 8s, and 9s into these cells. I'm actually going to look up more Star, Star Warigami puzzles because this is so good. It is so good. We should be doing more on the channel. This is really, really... Well, it's interesting. Doable, which is a nice feature for puzzles to have nowadays. Um, and has been incredibly well put together. Ah, ah, so now... That can't be 8, look, because that would make this domino have to add to 15, and 7, 8, and 6, 9 is not possible. So that means, if I remember rightly, we've got an 8. Yeah, so now this has to be 6, because we worked out before it couldn't be 9. I remember there was a 9 pencil mark down here belatedly. So now we've got an 8, 9 pair at the bottom, which is resolved by Sudoku. We have got... 
a 13 pair here, which means this is 13, which must now be 5, 8, which means this square is not 5. This square is 2 or 4 by maths, or by Sudoku, actually, really. This is a... Oh, right, hang on, look. It's got something going on here. This is 15, which means this triple adds up to 15. Or one way of thinking about this is that this domino adds up to 9, which is the spare digit, because the 6 is match off. So you've got to make this 6. It's not 3, 6. It's not 1, 8. So it's either... It's not Actually, it's not 4, 5. It's 2, 7 is the only way of making that work, which places a 4 here, a 2 here, a 5 here, and a 4 here, and a 5 here, and a 2 here. We haven't put a 1 into box 7 anymore. Oh, and now there's something going on between these red regions. This digit here look well two things I'm seeing firstly I can't put a 1 in here so the minimum value of this is 9 with 2 3 and 4 but we can't make this 9 because I can't make this 5 and yet it must be more than 9 and it can't be a se I can't put a 7 8 or a 9 in there so it must be a 6 and this must be 2 3 5 then because it's got no 1 in it um, which means this square here is a 4 and this square here is a 6, and this square here is an 8. And, okay, so now these three digits are all low, look, because everything high has been used in the row. Green, oh, green, these greens have to be the same. So can this be 1, 2, or 3? Possibly is the answer. Well, it clearly can't be three, but I think it might be able to be one or two. Um, right, so maybe we have to do more Sudoku now. I say, I say this with trepidation. I don't know if you could hear the trepidation in my voice. Um, hmm. Right, let us, let's have a look at those digits. They have got to be two, four and five. And there's almost something going on in the top row there. Oh, nine. Oh, look, this is actually just doable by, of course, Sudoku. So that's a nine, which means this has to be a high digit. When I say that, I mean it has to be a, a four, five or a six, because were it to be a one, two or three, we could never make this add up to enough. It's not a six. There's a six in the row. So it's four or five. That's not a three. Um, bother. Can we do better than that? Possibly, but I don't immediately see how. Six is placed in this box, in that cell, by Sudoku. Okay, so it is Sudoku we have to do. And now this digit must be at least seven, and it can't be nine. So it's, it's seven or eight. And this is one or two. And it's not two, there's a two in the box already. So this is one, this is seven by maths. This is seven, oops, that's seven, that's two. This is not two, or one, this is three, which means that nine with a three in it, it must be two, three, four. Oh no, it could be one to five, Bob, bother. <laughs> um, so this square is not a three. Uh, can we do better? Yeah, we can get a 5 here, look. So that's got to be a 2-3 pair. We can get a 5 here, that's got to be an 8. That fixes this as 4, which means this is 4 and this is 2. Uh, so this is 2, this is 1. And these digits now have got to be 4, 7 and 8, which means this is 8, this is 4 and this is 7. And now in this column we need a 1, which means a 1 and a 3 go in here. And this box needs 5, 8, 9. That's a 9 by Sudoku. This is 8. This is 5. This is a 3, 7 pair, which is resolved. And therefore this should be a 2, 5 pair, which is not resolved apparently. But never mind, this is definitely, I think, getting finished slowly but surely. Um... 
I hope, uh, at least I hope so. We don't seem to have a great deal of information in these dot rows, but this is one, these are ones, twos, threes, or fives. That's not one or three. So there's now a two five pair here, which means this is one or three and the one is helpful. So that's three, that's three, that's one. We've got a two five pair here. So we need four and eight into those squares, which is resolved. We need a four here, therefore. This square by the row has to be two, three, or five, and it's not three, so it must be two or five. And that means that cells a cells three, that cells a two. And this square is a something of, oh, no, I still oh, had a horrible moment there, I thought I'd broken the puzzle. Uh, I'm still not totally sure I haven't. Six, no, I have broken it, haven't I? I have broken it, how did I do that? I don't like the fact that this can't be a six. Why did I think that couldn't be a six? When I definitely haven't put a six in the top row. So I think I went wrong quite recently. I, oh yes, yes, I see where I've gone wrong. Okay, so where I reduced the value of this, I could have actually seen that is a two. It sees a four and a five in its row. So hopefully that was the error. Let's keep our fingers crossed. So this is a two. I need to put a six in one of those. And hopefully this can be a five. A five and a two. And yay. <laughs> fabulous puzzle. Absolutely fabulous. Um, I didn't get to quote Michael Palin or Monty Python nearly enough. And I'm sorry about that. I was fully prepared to, to do the Lumberjack song. Um, no, not really. Although, I, no, no, just don't go there, Simon. Just leave your brain out of it. Don't do it. Um, and let's stay off the Monty Python quotes and keep the video tame, um, but recommend everybody watches A Fish Called Wanda tonight and we can all laugh together knowing lots of cracking the cryptic folk are having fun with one of the greatest films of all time. Thank you, Star Warigami. Love the puzzle. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Thank you.